uh, the business of, of like how the, the, the medieval world treated evil. They, uh, it's like an inverse of the good. Uh, originally, the, the Pythagorean brotherhood used this form in its, in its upright um, form, it's like a neck pendant, when the, when the early Christians were being rousted and, and killed for about 300 years by the, the, Roman, the Romans, that uh, their, the Sigi of Piscus, so the bladder fish symbol, uh, failed them so that they, they began to use the, the, the Pythagorean Brotherhood one the other way. So they wore that as a pen. It's very hard to tell whether it's upright or not. And uh, like in the movie um, uh, The Wizard of Oz, the, the, the good witch has that, uh, has the, her star this way. You know, thing like this is like star market today. You'll notice their their uh, their sign. They have it in this form, and then, and everybody is considered that like represents you know pumping evil into the world. Well, it was simply that uh, that by bad association, the the Christian would put that on the door to ward off uh, the devil originally, because like uh, Constantine the first, who was a catechumen, that means a deathbed convert to Christianity, in his own uh, his own insignia used it this way. He represented it as uh, Christ crucified, as opposed to the other way, uh, Christ triumphant. And uh, a after a while, when you begin to associate something in popular imagination, it becomes the opposite. <coughs> so today, it's, it's used to represent evil. But a but actually, what it does is like it, there is no up and down in the universe, so that it it has the basic. Uh, singularity of the, of the golden proportion, no matter which way you do it. <coughs> Again, the, uh, the same type of thing. This is uh, uh, something I abstracted when I was doing the Divine Comedy of, of like the relationship between the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the idea of get thee behind me, Satan, as a way of, of, of protecting us. The, the person who actually influenced Dante was Joe from Flora, uh, a Cistercian monk who lived between 1135 and 1202 AD. He, he actually produced what would be, uh, as, as a, now here, here's a prophetic visionary of the scope of, of say, Théa de Chardin at this time, in which he changed the, word, the notion of, of history from living in the millennium to there being a future where there was an age of the law, uh, he, he, he was a, um, a Bible scholar. So he began to divide the Bible into the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, and the Book of Revelation. So there were like three basic ages. Now the, uh, the age of the law was where there was death, marriage, uh, things like things running down. It's almost, again, like an, an analog to, uh, to Plato's ages. And then finally, in the other age, gets into really what I would consider very science fiction. And I think I've always thought that, that science fiction was kind of a, a creative extension of Christianity into the 20th century. Because here where there would be uh, you know, physical immortality, no, no, no sexes, every, uh, all, everyone would be almost like uh, a macrodite. Uh, the only activity would be contemplation. And a very interesting thing, that if you've seen the movie uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a mothership comes down and, and the people build a landing strip. Well, uh, in, in deciphering the Latin texts, in some of them, that some of them haven't been translated. In one of them, he talks about New Jerusalem coming down and using the Dead Sea as like the landing area, which would be the, uh, the now, it would become the burning lake of sulfur. And he actually proposed models of the uh, of, of New Jerusalem, it's like almost like the cargo cults, where where people uh, I, I've forgotten, I, I guess they were in the in Polynesian islands or something, and that that they would build landing strips out of bamboo and, and airplanes to attract uh, you know the, the white man's airplanes to come down, you know, because they thought there was nothing around them but paradise, and the in the valley they lived in was the real world. So it's, it's that same type of thing, which is like uh, completely a kind of science fiction thing. Uh, the, the idea of there being like nothing but the world. Uh, as a matter of fact, he talked about uh, the whole world would become as, as, as a cathedral. And that, uh, so I, I took imagery from uh, you know, erosion patterns that almost look like 
uh, Gothic tracery and, and, and buttress systems that I, I added that in because he actually anticipated the Gothic, the architecture itself. He anticipated uh, perspective, which of course you know we now associate almost exclusively with the formation of, of the Renaissance, plus the the, the the reenactment of many Greek concepts, which is like what. Uh, which would be about like 150 years prior to that, because uh, Joachim began to use Grecian concepts of spirals, in other words, that the things would interlock with each other, one age would grow out of another. This became biological, and in, in a certain sense, I think where we start to get our concept of evolutionary time, something growing up in biological analogs. Uh, and alchemy, of course, was a, a, a great interest in the, in the Middle Ages, the, Combining things than hermaphrodite. Again, uh, Apollo and Dionysus, this polarity between male and female. The, uh, so I did a, a painting on that, which had to do with the, the entire system. Again, a kind of a, of a, a mandala about the way it works. Uh, flames. Um, okay. A more modern version would be the, the ill fated comet Kapotek. Uh, I did the. Uh, the, the horoscope of it, and it, it said that people would understand it who worked on it alone at night. It would not be as theatrical uh, as it, you know as it was claimed. Uh, this uh, was a, a, an early version of of what what I considered the Omega point of Teilhard de Chardin. I became very interested in his pr prophetic uh, visionary approach about using, uh, using the concept of, of evolution connected to science, but then moving into uh, combining that with history, and that there would be a, uh, something that, that it summed up the universe. So this is almost like uh, all the, the monads of lizards, you know, finally uh, giving up their reflective power and then, and then uniting into one thing. It's a lot of slide. Uh, I, I used the Klein model a lot, and the first time I used it was in this one, where I, I laid out in time like the effects of, of revelation onto a, a, a personal consciousness. So there's like, like the operations of time and things like there being an anticipation of the future. Um, a remembrance of the past in terms of the immediate past would be where the action was, where you didn't know what was happening. Then there would be the unacceptable past prior to that, where it's like you wouldn't be caught dead doing something because all those problems have immediately been solved. And then suddenly after that, there would be a position where there would be an acceptable past, where you could begin culling information and bringing it forward. So that this would be like memory that induces transcendence opposed to an area where it didn't. <coughs> now those are like uh, things dealing with both the future and the past. Uh, can can produce a type of transcendence from the present moment. Uh, and so this is this is a uh, uh, it. this is called the suicide of the ultimate medium. This is like the, the ego operating in, in relation to the world and at, at its highest style. It's like performance art where there's one basic statement made. And so that I, I consider that like a kind of uh, like a, a definition of yourself as opposed to material, and so that I have like the four, the four stages of matter, where uh, matter is a sign, matter is an index, matter is an icon, and matter is a symbol that's involved, because you, in, in a sense, are, are denying any possibilities uh, uh, in, in anything that can continue in the future. Um, this is where I'm uh, talking about the about history as an interconnected link. Where I uh, again, it's the first time I used the form called the Alexander Pond Sphere, which is a, uh, a form from topology. This I'm referring to this part here, which has a, 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 ne a never-ending interconnection, so that it, it moves from from singularity to singularity, it creates a constellation of singularities, in which you could almost describe human. Uh, communication is like the anticipation of the anticipation of the anticipation where the, uh, the, the excitement and the, the, the possibilities open up as you get closer. So it's like 
you achieve in personality by coming in into union ra rather than than uh, uh, it's, it's like union differentiates and, and creates more power than than simply like something is coming together as a lump so that that more and more things happen and so the delicacy of it grows and grows and that uh, that seems to me like a way to to, to consummate uh, history as a leader.